Hello, and welcome to another day of sailing Lake Mead. We started this series because when we first started up sailing on Lake Mead, no one could really specifically tell us where to go and what the coves were called, although some people were a little more knowledgeable. So it's Memorial Day weekend and it's a Monday and it's 90, it's going to be 97 degrees today. Uh, probably only three to five knot winds if we're lucky. We're on a 29 cal and um, she has a tiller and a gasoline engine. So we're gonna end it, we're gonna motor out into Boulder Basin. Um, our marina is over there just a little bit um, south of Boulder Beach, is that what it's called? And, um, but as you can see, it's kind of like sailing or boating in this big quarry. And not necessarily the kind of thing that people who sail on lakes in Michigan or Canada are used to with all the greenery, but it has its own interesting um, topography and very difficult to navigate in terms of finding the coves because all of the rocks kind of look the same. So we have a map and we have our electronic navigation and uh, Jake's phone still works with GPS so we actually also use our GPS on his iPhone and we can see really well via satellite um, where some docks are. Now I don't know how up to date the Google uh, Maps are right now but um, one of the docks we're going to today is Hideaway Cove just off of Swallow Bay. Head out of the marina and go to the end of Boulder Islands and turn almost due north for about four and a half nautical miles. Battleship Rock is on your right and as you come into Swallow Cove there are some shallow kind of areas. Hideaway Cove is tucked away just in the corner there. It takes about 45 minutes, dead reckoning, um, no tacking. There's more boat activity on the lake today than we've ever seen. We've only been on sailing on this lake since February. So this is our third month and we've been here when it was chilly and we had to wear heavy jackets and fleeces and now we're here in bikinis and lots of sunscreen. City up there in the hill. Marina back there. There's Boulder Beach. Families gathering, maybe to have picnics and bonfires. It's hardcore, y'all, out here in the desert. Just look it out to the lake. They have their canopies They're all set up. And we're probably gonna go swimming, I hope. Not sure what this is. Did, did we ever find out what that thing is on one of the Boulder Islands? Maybe an old water tank holding thing? Or maybe it was from when during the war. <laughs> Looks like it. So we're coming around north of, of the Boulder Islands right here. The big thing with this lake that we've noticed, and of course everybody else has too, um, is the wind is really, really erratic. So sometimes there's absolutely zero wind and then it comes up out of nowhere and and then it says it's going to be a certain amount of knots and then the gusts though are like 20, 10 to 20 knots more. So you'll get, you know, you think, oh, 22 knots, I'll just reef down and we'll be fine. And then you get these 40 knot gusts. So you really have to know how to uh, spill the wind. and. Um, so on a day like today, we're just looking for the wind. There is some up here. See that gray line? That's a little bit of wind. We're just going to motor into that wind and then we'll raise the sails. We created a waypoint and it's very close to what the map said. We have a northwest wind going as fast as we were on the motor. 
nice. To be really careful in this lake because it's down so much in its water level that these rocks just kind of stick up out of nowhere. They're not necessarily marked. Keep an eye out for weird movement on top of the water. The markers are actually on top of the hills where that hill used to be an actual marker under the water. All right, so if there's too many people here, we could just go to another cove. We've never anchored this boat, so let's see if the dock has room. I think it's in their hideaway cove where that boat is. So just turned on your phone, Jake, and it's much clearer where Hideaway Cove is on your GPS. You can see our little boat there. And you can even see that there's some very underneath the water danger possibilities right there. So we're staying to the left. Wow. There's the dock up there, see? Next to the H. guys have a very shallow keel, that's why they can just go right up on the beach like that. There's the dock, the poop dock. It has a bathroom on it and a place to clean your fish. And of course the wind is coming up just as we talked. But we wanted to get here in case somebody else had taken it. But most of these people are day people. Wish we had a little um, paddle board so we could go explore those marshes over there, but maybe we can just head over there so we, we have some noodles. Marshes. Marshes. <laughs> So what's cool about docking up on these um, floating boat pump outs is that the boat moves with the pump station because it's a dock. So now we're facing the perfect direction to watch the sunset. Fortunately it's a little overcast. We have these neighbors down there. Arguing and arguing. We've been trying to drown them out with beautiful music. So I forgot to pack the steaks. That's what we always have when we go out boat camping. And I forgot the steaks. Uh. So we're having an order of dinner. Well, that's pretty good. Smoked oysters, goat cheese, salsa, homemade of guacamole. And we're gonna warm up <laughs> the fries that we bought earlier at the marina. Here's the culinary tip for today. My sister told me this. If you keep, if you make guacamole and you put the seed back in the guacamole, then the guacamole stays green. It doesn't get all like brown and funky. And it did. It did stay green. I, I actually left both of them in there. Ooh. 
There's this really creepy sound over there of some creepy animal. It's the, it's the goose. So this isn't such a crappy camera. My little Samsung Tablet 8 that I bought for $89. Look, here's the quarter moon. I'm in my hammock. Oh my god, that's so creepy. What are those things making that sound? That couple that was arguing, they left. Listen to that. It's her. She's gnawing off her arm <laughs> to get free. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Not a goose. That is something being tortured. Oh, that's that little girl. Listen to it. That was yeah. lost. That's been lost. Oh yeah, earlier the um, park ranger came by and there was a hiker that had been spotted and then hooker. reported lost. The hooker, he said. He said hooker. Hiker. Hooker. Oh, Jake. Oh, Jake. And, and uh, she was wearing, they, they described her as a bikini yeah. wearing a black knapsack. Hooker. And they were asking if we'd seen her. Now, we are on the hooker. Nevada side here in Hideaway Cove. Oh, that's weird that someone got lost or was reported lost. Listen, listen. That's her. Shh, 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 listen. That's her. Oh my god, that's the weirdest sound. That's her. I mean, I don't know where she is. I suppose I should go look for her. Fuck it. Well, what's that other sound? Oh my god, that's such a creepy sound. That's her gnawing off her... Okay, we've determined that it might be frogs. That's the moon. It sounds like they're being tortured. Gotta be frogs. So it's almost 11 o'clock at night, and we have the citronella on the candle, and we're listening to the frogs, and it's really quiet, and all the other motorboat weirdos left. So we're having a nice evening. Hideaway Cove gets a thumbs up from us, and the temperature is dropping, so we'll have a nice, cool evening to sleep. Might even stay in this little hammock here, and um, we'll see you tomorrow morning for breakfast.